In this lesson, we're going to focus on economic growth. Now, you've been studying economics for some time at this point, and you've surely come across the definition of economic growth in previous lessons. Economic growth is simply defined as an increase in a nation's output of goods and services over a period of time. Another way to look at economic growth is that incomes are increasing on average in a nation over time. So you could say it's an increase in average incomes over time. In previous lessons, we've distinguished between the income and the output approach to measuring GDP. So therefore, there's actually no difference when you're referring to GDP growth as an increase in output or an increase in income. In this lesson, we'll distinguish between short-run economic growth, sometimes called actual growth, and long-run economic growth, sometimes referred to as potential growth. And we'll be doing this in two different models both the production possibilities curve, which is the very first graph you ever learned in your economics class, and in the ADAS model, which is a macro-specific model that you have learned more recently. Let's start with actual or short-run economic growth. Actual growth, short-run growth, occurs when there is an increase in the equilibrium output of a nation that is producing below its full employment level. Another way of looking at that is inside its PPC. So graphically, what does actual or short-run growth look like? Let's add some labels to our graphs and we'll illustrate short-run economic growth using both the PPC and the ADAS model. For my production possibilities curve, I'm going to look at the vertical and horizontal axes as the production of as the production possibilities of two different categories of goods both consumer goods on the vertical axis and capital goods, which are those technology tools used by firms to produce other goods on the horizontal axis. We know that due to the scarcity of natural and human and capital resources, there is a trade-off as a country faces its decision about what combination of capital and consumer goods to produce. Therefore, there is a production possibilities curve that shows the potential output of a nation if it uses all of its resources efficiently. So when a country is producing at a point inside, we'll call this point A, its production possibilities curve, this implies that it is not using all of its resources efficiently. There is excess capital, labor, and land resources that are not being used efficiently. Unemployment is high, the country is producing inside its PPC, and we assume it is below its potential full employment level. So a movement from point A to a, clo to a point closer to the PPC, I'll label this point B, represents economic growth. As you can see, there's an increase in the output of both capital goods as we move along our horizontal axis and consumer goods as we move along our vertical axis. This movement from point A to B represents actual economic growth. Output is increased in the short run to a point closer to the nation's production possibilities curve. However, as we're going to see in a moment, this is not an increase in the potential growth of the economy. Whereas the country is using its resources more efficiently, it is not increasing the quantity or the quality of the resources available for production. Let's show how actual economic growth or short-run growth can be illustrated in the ADAS model now. In our aggregate demand, aggregate supply model, we know that the potential output of a nation in the short run is represented by the vertical LRIS curve, which is above the full employment level of output. We know the horizontal axis shows real GDP, and the vertical axis shows average price level. We know there's a short run aggregate supply curve showing how the economy will determine its equilibrium output based on the level of aggregate demand and aggregate supply at any particular time. Now, an economy that is achieving actual growth or short-run growth is an economy that is seeing aggregate demand increase, for example, from AD1 to a level of demand closer to the full employment level, which I'll call AD2. Notice in this model, there is an increase in the actual level of output from Y1 to a point closer to full employment. We'll call that Y2. So we have an increase in real GDP. This is economic growth. Along with that growth comes a little, but not a lot, of demand pull inflation. The reason there's not much inflation, of course, is that there are many 
unused resources in the economy when the economy is producing below full employment. Labor, land, and capital are relatively abundant. Therefore, firms can meet the higher level of demand without raising their prices and without having to pay more for their resources. So we see an increase in actual output. This represents actual or in our ADAS case, short run growth as the economy has moved from a point producing below full employment to a level of output closer to the full employment level. So going back to our notes here, we can describe the change in actual output as a movement from a point inside a nation's PPC to a point closer to or on the PPC. Resources are used more efficiently. There is a reduction in unemployment. Capital that might have been sitting idle has been put towards production. Once again, actual output increases. In an ADAS model, this is illustrated as a movement in equilibrium. Now let me change that. An increase in equilibrium output from a point below full employment to a point to a level closer to full employment. The sources of short run actual growth are rooted in increased efficiency in the use of resources. So resources are used more efficiently. Unemployment falls. Idle capital and land are put into production. Notice that what has not changed in the case of short run economic growth is the potential output of the nation. There has been no increase in the quantity or the quality of resources, only the efficiency with which existing resources are used or the level of employment of existing resources. In both cases, in both the PPC and the ADIS model, output has increased, but there has been no increase in potential output. An economy has just gone from producing at an inefficient level, which would be Y1, in my ADIS graph or point A in my PPC graph towards a more efficient level, which would be Y2 in my ADIS graph or point B in my PPC. So let's distinguish now between short run economic growth and what we call potential growth or long run economic growth. Potential growth is achieved when there is an increase in the production possibilities of a nation or the long run potential level of output. Graphically, we're going to see this is illustrated as an increase in the PPC or an increase in long run aggregate supply. Let's start with our PPC here. A country moving from point A to point B is growing. Its output is increased. It has moved closer to its production possibilities. However, in order for long run potential growth to occur, the country has to move to a point beyond its current PPC talk about now point C, which as you can see is currently impossible because it's beyond the PPC. But in order to make point C possible, the PPC has to shift out. This shift out of the PPC represents potential growth, growth in the potential output of a nation, which is achievable in the long run as a result of several factors which we'll outline in just a moment. So an increase in the production possibilities means that the potential level of output a country can achieve, the combination of both capital goods and consumer goods it can produce increases due to an increase in the productive capacity of the economy. So moving from point B to C, we witness an increase in both consumer goods and capital goods to a level beyond what was previously possible. And that brings us down to our ADAS model. I think you won't be surprised to see that long run potential economic growth is illustrated as an outward shift in the long run aggregate supply curve from LRAS to LRAS 2. This outward shift represents an increase in the full employment level of output. Along with LRAS, we're gonna see short run aggregate supply curve shift out to SRAS 2 and in fact, aggregate demand will shift out as well to AD3. Now, if we can make sense of all the lines on this graph, we can see that the new equilibrium level of output, the new full employment level of output, is at a higher point than it was 
before the outward shifts in AD and AS. Graphically, potential economic growth, otherwise known as long-run economic growth, is represented by an outward shift of a nation's PPC and a level of output beyond what would have been possible before the long-run economic growth occurred, or an outward shift of the long-run aggregate supply curve, SRAS, and aggregate demand. Long-run economic growth generally is illustrated as an outward shift of all three curves, as an outward shift of all three curves. There is a greater potential level of output, which is now demanded at a greater level as well. What are the sources of long-run economic growth? What can cause the potential output of a nation to increase over time? That's what we're really talking about here. The sources of long-run economic growth are slightly different than those from short-run growth because it requires an increase in the quality or the quantity of productive resources, factors of production, by which we mean land, labor, and capital. So perhaps this requires a little bit more explanation. How do you increase the quantity of land, labor, and capital? Well, there are several ways. Land, let's start with land. Discovering new resources or finding ways to use existing resources more efficiently. Technology can increase the productivity and the quality of a nation's land resources. For example, farming technologies or mining technologies, chemical fertilizers, new methods for extracting resources such as hydraulic fracturing, which is being used widely in the United States to increase the quantity of natural gas and other energy resources. Pesticides increase the quality of land for farming. These are ways that a nation's PPC or LRAS can shift out by focusing on the improvement in the quantity or quality of land resources. What about capital resources? Capital resources, the factors of production that require technology or robotics or any machinery that's used in the production of a good, will be improved in the quality and quantity by investment. So investment by firms in new technologies or better technologies increases both the quantity and the quality of capital and leads to long-run economic growth. Finally, labor. How do you increase the quantity of labor? Well, population growth. Higher birth rates will, in the very long run, increase the productive capacity of the economy. More labor entering the labor force, more people entering the labor force increases the potential output and the aggregate demand in a nation, hence shifting both LRAS and SRAS outwards, and aggregate demand for that matter. In addition to population growth, you could have immigration. More immigration increases the potential output of a nation, causing long-run economic growth. Now, both population growth and immigration refer to the quantity of labor. What about the quality of labor? Better education systems or job training programs can increase the quality of labor, hence increase productivity. Now, this word productivity is very important when discussing economic growth, both in the short run and in the long run. Productivity refers to the output per unit of inputs. Land becomes more productive when technology is used in the production of mineral or agricultural resources. Labor becomes more productive when technology is added, when capital is provided to workers. They become more productive. Or when education is provided to workers. Capital itself becomes more productive when investments in new technologies are undertaken by firms. So productivity is improved through investment in physical land and labor resources. So capital, land, and labor can all be improved. Now this investment, this could, un could be undertaken by the private sector, meaning businesses, or the public sector. Some types of investment are best undertaken by the public sector. Investments in education, for example, investments in healthcare. These are investments that can increase the quality of labor resources and therefore lead to long-run economic growth in a nation. In this lesson, we have defined economic growth, which is a concept and a term that you were no doubt familiar with before watching this lesson, but we've also gone into some of the graphical analysis of and the sources of both short-run and long-run economic growth. We showed that an increase in actual output or short-run growth occurs when a country moves from a point inside its PPC to a point closer to its PPC or when aggregate demand increases from a point below full employment to a point closer to full employment. 
Long-run economic growth, on the other hand, entails an increase in the productive capacity, the potential output of a nation, and the full employment level of output, achievable through an improvement in the quantity or the quality of land, labor, and capital resources. Here we go.